Hey everyone, well here's gonna be my intro to Tsukamaki, I guess for the beginner. Because that's I still consider myself that. So, um, if you watch my other video on all the tools that you need, or the tools that I use for this, and you're gonna try this out, I'm gonna be using some of those tools in here. So if you didn't watch it, and you don't know what these tools are, you can go back to the other video and watch it. But to start off, I got a, I think this is a 10 and a half, 11 inch handle. It's off of a sword build that I did. I put a 12 inch handle on, so I got this one left over. So I'm gonna use this as my kind of demo piece. And see how I'm not gonna use any of this cord. First thing I gotta do, Is I gotta cut off this old Edo, and I'm not really uh, not really concerned about keeping it. So if I cut cut it or damage it, I'm not really not really worried about it. And they use they use glue. In certain spots on Chinesse, like right here, they use glue, so it's kind of hard to cut. But depending on if you buy a new handle from them, like a replacement handle, and you take it off pretty nicely, the the Edo still it's still good. You can still use it for other things. I usually just if it's a, still a good piece and there's not a lot of glue stuck to it. I'll normally wash it and dry it and then iron it and then just hold on to it. Never know when you might need it. See, this has got a this has got a lot of glue on it. Cut some of this right there. Then I'm kind of interested to see if this ray skin on here is all one piece or if it's piece together. I thought it looked like it was more than one piece, but we'll see. Okay, here we go. Might just be different colored, so this might be some good ray skin. Okay, glued on right there. Get that off. So now we got our handle. And I can see this handle is cracked right there, so this would wouldn't be good to put back on a sword, anyway. So it's good that I took it apart. But you got a nice solid piece. It's a little discolored. But if you were going to dye this black, that really wouldn't matter. So, uh, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to put top piece back on. And get rid of this brown Edo that's completely junk. So that to the side. And see how my... It's a, it's a darker color, so I'm going to go with... The black electrical tape instead of the lighter masking tape. And all I'm going to do is try and keep it as centered as possible. Run it all the way down. to turn my phone because this doesn't look like it's going to be getting all in view as much. Run that down one side, so I'll run it down the other. And 
this electrical tape is stretchy, so you don't want to keep it taut, you want to kind of relax it. Okay. Now in my video that I did before on the tools that I use, I mentioned that if it's a rewrap that you're doing, to take a picture of it so you remember A, which side to start the wrap on, B, where the manuki were, just in case you want to put them back in the same spot. So that's pretty much ready to go. I'm going to get out some super glue and get out a little hammer. I think I'm going to try and turn. should probably invest in a better system of holding my phone. Alright, we're going to hit this. We're going to stick with this. Okay. So, you've got some of your tools. You've got your Edo. you got to make sure you find the center of it. I'm going to do that off camera. As long as you have enough, which it's normally one inch, for every inch of handle, that's one foot, and then you add four feet. So if this is a, I'm just going to call this an 11 inch handle, plus four feet, I'm going to need 15 feet. As long as you're close to the middle, you'll be okay. There's always extra at the very end. Okay, there's my middle. Right there. And then I have these were already coated in clear lacquer. I'm, I just printed this one off. I did this at work on AutoCAD. And I'm gonna I'm gonna test these out to see if they measure up right. But you can never tell until you actually do it. And if they work good, I'll post these up on my Facebook page where you can just grab the image and print it off on a 8.5 by 11 sheet. And you guys can use them. Now, Paying attention to try and cut on that line is as good as I can. I want it to be nice and sharp edges. I want them to all be even. I said Tsukamaki is not the most interesting an exciting thing to do. It's almost almost boring at some points, especially when you're just cutting this stuff out. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. Okay, that'll be good enough for the for the demo. Okay, so I got all that ready. I got my center. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it right up there. And I know this is going to be wrapping around. So I'm going to do, do one side first just to start off. And I'm going to use the super glue method. Just put a little, little dab on there. And I'm going to stretch this. I'm going to stretch and pull it.
Then I'm going to go to the other side. A little dab. So I'm going to hold this a little bit side with my thumb. Stretch and pull. And that'll be your that'll be your start. And the reason I did one side, stretched it, and then to the other side and stretched it is you want this to be you don't want this to be loose. You can see how much narrower that is compared to I can't see it on camera. It's about two mils narrower than than that. You want this to be all even. So at this point is where you would be rubbing your wax or uh, pine resin right in there. Let me see if I have a small piece of... Here, I'll do this. The Here's just a piece of white candle. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it down the back. So it's got a little bit of wax on there. Now how, how I, try, I tend to do this is I'll hold with my thumb right about where the tape meets the ray skin. And I'll hold down. And you're going to twist under. Hold it with your thumb. And twist back over. And then you got to kind of pull. So right there, I'll sit and look at it. And I'll try and judge if it's in the center. And if both of these are even to the center. Don't always go off your ray skin because that's not always cut even. Go off the center portions of your actual actual suka which that one that one doesn't look too bad so what I'll do is I'll hold it right there put just a dab of super glue stretch and pull and now that's in place now right here is where I start installing these and let's see how these work out. I kind of like it with that with that line in the middle because then I know how far to put this in there to where I'm going to have even amounts on both sides. This one. Let's see how this is coated in lacquer. They're a little stiffer, so that's that's a little bonus. Okay, so now you're going to take your right side, you're going to pull, now you're going to go under, so you're going to see the either the pine resin or the wax. Under, and then keep keep twisting, and you want to try and catch that rest of that triangle. That's not too bad. That one's a little off. So I'm going to re-grab this. Try and get more of a triangle on there. Pull it tight. Make sure everything looks even. If everything looks good, put a dab over here. And we'll move to the other side. And this is where these styles will be different. Uh, normally you, I started with the right. 
So I would go with the I would go with the right again, twist that, twist it. Uh, I've seen a lot of styles where they do that. A lot of production places do that because it's easy to do. But really, you're supposed to go left, right, left, right. So I'd have to start with the right side on this. So I'm going to try and make a. This is a lot easier to do when you don't have a camera right in front of you. Okay, I'm going to pull that tight. That doesn't look too bad. And this is also where the plus and minus of using the glue is going to be in. The plus is you can let go once it's glued and you don't got to worry about your work falling apart. The minus is once you glue it and you don't like it, well now you have a tendency of ripping your your Edo. So I, I try not to use it when I don't have to. But like I said, this Edo, if you get it from Artist Fang or eBay, you can get it pretty cheap. So. You don't got to worry about wasting a whole lot of money. I think this Edo costs like four bucks. So I got that one in there up to the line. These are actually working out pretty nicely. I got that up to the line. So now I'm going to take this end, pull it tight, hold it with my thumb, twist it and try and grab part of that. That triangle. And then hold it. All right, that's not looking too bad. Put a drop of glue. Okay, so on this side, you went from right, the right side's under, left side, so I want this also to be a right turn. So I'm going to do a the right side first. This is a hell of a lot easier to do when there's not a camera in front of you. And I'm going to try and start my bend. It's going to be kind of hard to see. I want to try and start it right where that one ends. So definitely make sure you have enough room for everything to move around. So I'm kind of cluttered right here, but okay. Make sure that's tight. Make sure that's tight. So it's they're up against each other. And I'll toss a dab back there. Also, probably doesn't help that I'm doing this at 11 o'clock at night. After working a full day in the heat inside of a shop and then trying to help out at home with the kids. I'll take two more. What's nice about these is seeing how they're all pre cut and pre done for you. you can cut up a bunch at a time you know, pretty easily just sitting there watching TV you can cut up a bunch that's how I did the my other ones I would just print them all out and put them on a piece of cardboard clear lacquer them 
And then while we were watching TV, I would just sit there with a little bucket and just clip away. So as you're, as you're pulling and twisting, you want to try and keep it as tight as possible. I don't like the way that one looks, so I'm going to try and shorten it up a little bit. Turn this over. Put a little drop on there. As you can see, this is not a quick process. So I need some more, more of these. I'll cut a couple more out just so I can go wrap around one or two more times. Now while you're doing this, always remember where you want your Manuki because the very first handle I ever did I was I took a couple hours to do it and I was actually pretty impressed with the way I did it and it looked awesome and then I realized I totally forgot to put them in which I ended up liking it that way but I was a little disappointed so I got some more of them this can come off don't really need that anymore so this one is going from the left side's going on top, right side's going on the bottom, so now I want the left side to go on the bottom. This is this is right here. This is where the production katanas fall short. Is one of the manuki is always usually covered up. One of the makugi pins. That and they're really cheap. said I don't consider myself a master at this at all I would call myself proficient at it because I can make it look pretty good but definitely I know I'm I'm doing something not right and something non-traditional and I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there that are looking at this going oh he's doing that wrong and he's doing that wrong and you should be doing it this way. Trust me, I know. So there's two more. Pulling it tight. Giving it one twist. Down the second one. Trying to trying to wrap around. Those triangles. And this is where this this is where this tool kind of comes in handy. You can kind of move stuff around and help tuck things under. If it doesn't if it doesn't look a hundred percent, I mean if it's close, but you just got to move the fabric just a little bit. You can normally budget with the little brass hammer. Now every time that I am using this glue, that is where traditionally they'll have, it's a special clamp that you'll, you'll clamp it with. And normally I use this clamp and I'll go one at a time, but that takes even longer. I didn't want this video to drag out. 
plus I like I said I think for beginners like me the glue is pretty uh pretty helpful so here again I need to go this one was the left was on top so this left needs to be on the bottom this one needs to go first And the wax does help with keeping this, keeping the twist kind of tight. But I'm telling you, the the pine resin is just awesome. I wish I would have done that when I first tried wrapping a wrapping a handle. So a little little dab. As you can see, I'm only putting the dabs on the electrical tape like I said if you if you screw up or you gotta restart and you rip it off you're not gonna be ripping off the wood and the other video I mentioned about painting these little triangles the same color as your Edo I still do recommend that I didn't paint these just for demonstration purposes so you can really see how they fit. Let's go in just a little bit further. So at this point, once you get past your first pen, which most of the production swords are going to have too, because a lot of them claim, oh, well, it adds durability and strength. Yeah, it adds durability and strength, but they do that because these are production-made handles. They're not cut on the inside to each sword how they're supposed to be. They're just shoved down there, so by having two pins in there, you create, you get rid of any slop that is left in the handle. So that's just a way of getting rid of that. And yes, it does add some strength. So you can see right there the pin's still able to go in on this side. These production pins aren't tapered at all, they're just round dowels. They never want to go back in how these others supposed to. So it's not lined up properly, but what, that's what you're going to get out of a production katana. So, so far, it's not looking too bad. Now, right here is where I'd probably start thinking about placing little decorative ornaments of the Manuki. And there's two ways of doing this. One, you can place them in there, put some string around it, or hold it or you can do what I do and it's definitely frowned upon it's just all I'm looking is for a little bit of hole I'm not trying to permanently attach these to this it's just so I don't got to worry about it flying around when I'm worried more about the the Edo wrap Because if you wrap this tight, then that's what's going to be holding it on there. You don't got to worry about it falling loose. This is the one spot where I always seem to spend the most time. Just because you're not going over a nice flat surface anymore. 
you're going over some ridges and everything else so definitely take your time when you're going going over these definitely don't want to rush any of this because you'll regret it in the end now I have found that these don't always work around these handle ornaments I'll say this one might, might actually work with this this kind in this section. See, so once you get going, it's it gets fun. You get kind of into it. And if you've noticed, I haven't been putting wax on this anymore, which you should remember to keep doing. already I don't like that. I'm gonna try and move this fold out a little bit more. If it's just gonna be a, a beater sword, something you're not gonna wanna what you would call show off or have as a prized possession. You still take your time because you want to take pride in your work, but you don't got to be as picky with keeping everything dead center in line and that every one of these is going to be exactly the same size. Uh, I, I found trying to achieve that is something for a professional. You can get them close, but You're not going to be exact, but already right there, that's a pretty, it's a pretty tight wrap. So I would continue on this all the way down, and then of course place my other little demon here. I think that was placed down here at the bottom. I don't like placing them down there because sometimes it interferes with the knot. Hence why I'm not a huge fan of this second pin because really that should probably be right around there. So you're going all the way down until you get to the end and then it, your last wrap should end. I'll say what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fake this. this off camera all I'm doing is I'm just wrapping it around the the super right now just to save time I know some people would probably want to see me wrap the whole thing but I don't know if I have the patience for that, how long this has taken. So when you get to the end, you should come to where on the one side, you're going to be going right back up against all this glue that got shoved in here. Cut this out. These production places love using their glue to make up for shoddy work. So 
so with this cap on here your last wrap when you come to one side you should be coming up just like this so it meets up with the end that's where you're when you're going to start your end knot if it doesn't if you fall short if this is hanging too far off that's where I would get a file and I would start filing down on this end just to bring this in further if you find yourself overlapping take it off and this is not a traditional way of doing this and it's not something I have done before but it's just the way that I've thought of doing it if I ever had to I thought I was going to have to do it on that last sword that I just did the all black one I measured it I thought it was going to be too short but actually it was too long so I lucked out as you're just going to have to add material onto here which you can do that by adding wood filler or you know like a putty or epoxy and then add more than you need and then sand it down so once you get to that point you're going to start your end knot which maybe I'll finish this up in my spare time and I'll do a video on the end knot but here's that that was a half ass kind of video on how to do a sukumaki this is just a standard style of wrapping but of course you got your your what they call battle wrap which has the the wrap where it just wraps around like this which there's instructions on how to do that pretty much you'd go from this right here and you'd kind of pull it down and you pull this one over and you pull the top one really tight and you cut that off right there and then you'll just take the one piece and keep maybe I'll do that on this one maybe I'll make it a battle wrap just to speed up the video like I said this piece will be cut off so you won't have all this hanging over you just do that all the way down until you start back up with your triangles and when you start back up you'll actually take an end piece and you'll put it like this and then that'll go over it and you pull it really tight and then over here you start back up with your with your triangles So hopefully this gives you a idea of how to do it. I guess it's not really an instructional video because I'm not that great at it. I'm trying to do it upside down is definitely not easy. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, that's ugly. That's how you would start the battle wrap back up. So, that was kind of a long video, kind of boring, but that's, I guess, my intro to Tsukamaki. Hopefully that helps you guys out, now that I'm thinking about it, this video wasn't that great, but hopefully it gave you some idea of how to start it, and once you start, just keep on going. Start off simple, start off with inexpensive materials, because you're going to get frustrated. Later.